How's it going, guys? It's Al. We're going to talk about the Thursday night football game on DraftKings for the single game showdown slate. We're going to go over some lineup possibilities. We're going to look at some cash game strategies. We're going to take a look at some GPP lines that we might take. And I mean lines like this is the strategy and the path we're going to take, not a lineup. I'm not here to give you a lineup. I never have been here to give people lineups in the six years that I've been doing content. Uh on different mediums, television, radio, podcast, article, digital video, whatever else. I am not here to give you a lineup to cut and paste into yours. I am not a command V YouTuber. That is not what I do. So I'm here to give you a path. I'm here to teach you how to fish. I'm here to give you some strategies and things to think about when you're going through your own lineup building process so that you can make correct decisions so that you can be a more profitable player in time. Thank you guys for watching this channel. I appreciate you finding it because a lot of the viewers on this channel recently have been people that have been finding it through YouTube searches, suggested videos, everything else. Thank you for being here. I would love for you to stay. So please click that subscribe button, ring the notifications bell because I pump out a lot of content for daily fantasy NFL as the season goes on, four or five videos a week. And I would love to see you back. So drop a like on this video. Leave me a comment in the comment section down below. And let's get to it. So Thursday night football. We've got Minnesota against the Rams. Look at this. There's a 1.111.111 million dollar tournament. This was a million dollar showdown, right? So like they upped this chat? Did they did they beef this up? Or was it about this price before? 250k to first. You're probably gonna split it. It's very unlikely that one person will win unless something strange happens, kind of like last week where uh, Tyrod Taylor gets concussed and Baker Mayfield comes in and like 2% of the field played Baker Mayfield. Uh, so all of those people all of a sudden are going to jump in, right? And they're, they're going to move up the leaderboard where most people didn't. So unless you're playing backups, if no injuries happen to the starters, typically speaking, uh, it's going to be split and it's going to be split uh, multiple ways. It's nice to see that these showdown slates have been getting bigger. Uh, they're a fun distraction for me. I don't play as much uh, of my bankroll. I don't allocate as much money. Uh, into these slates as I do on the Sunday full slate. I do play them. It's fun. Uh, I play it from a tournament perspective and low stakes uh, head to head where on Sundays I go after all the high stakes stuff. A lot of high stakes head to heads, probably 20, 25 times. What I have in play on the showdown slates, I have in play on Sunday. So uh, I play a lot smaller on these. So that's just for disclosure. That's just transparency. I'm not out there firing, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, at a Thursday night slate. Very high variance, uh, but to me, it, it's a fun way to play the game in a casual way for me. Like a way for me to play the game casually, uh, where generally speaking, I take it extremely serious and play for very high stakes. Uh, these Thursday night, Sunday night, Monday night games is a chance for me to kind of just dip my toes in, play as a casual and go after some tournaments and maybe some low stakes head to heads just to stay fresh. So typically speaking, our, our strategy has been uh, in cash games, until they change the, the salary pricing, uh, the, the salary ladder, right? Uh, typically speaking, our strategy at the beginning of the season was to go highest projected guy in the, you know, in the slot there, right? In the captain slot, go with two kickers and then fill in the rest of the, the dudes, right? So like maybe you go Thielen, Diggs. Uh, Dalvin Cook was injured. I don't know if he's still there or whatever, you know, uh, if he's going to be healthy by Thursday, if they rested him Sunday to play him Thursday uh, and just, just fire in guys, right? And I didn't care if I left a bunch of money on the table, but now they've kind of, they forced this stars and scrubs kind of pricing, right? Which has changed the way that, that I'm looking at these slates. Because now I think one kicker or defense, so like it was kind of two kickers, so I'd pick two spots between kicker and defense and fill them in because you needed that to beef up uh, the rest of your lineup. I don't know that that's optimal anymore, right? So the highest price guys are still optimal for, for the captain spot. That's where you want to go, at least in head-to-head -head games. Uh, tournaments, you're, you're allowed a little bit more freedom to do what you want, especially if you're entering multiple lineups. Um, but I'm going to ha want to have one quarterback in cash. I'm probably going to want to have one... Uh, of the four kicker slash defenses uh, and then find a low priced player because now there are players priced who are actually playing significant snaps priced at or below the kickers. So it gives you a little bit lower floor, but you have a much higher ceiling, uh, especially in tournaments. 
So where earlier in the year it was more optimal based on the way the pricing was to play two kickers or defenses, even in tournaments, uh, now it's it's less so. And, and <laughs> UNC in the chat says, always play those backup QBs. I mean, in that one situation this week, probably. Okay, so Todd Gurley at home has just been an absolute monster. We know that, right? I mean, he's going to get his 25 touches pretty much every single week. Uh, he's going to live in this range. He's going to be a touchdown monster. He's going to catch him through the air. Touchdowns in uh, three straight games and five total on the year. He is scoring off against Minnesota is extremely tough. I still think he's captain viable and is going to be one of the most popular captains on the slate unless uh, we can find another route. Where I would never attack the Rams defense with wide receivers or quarterbacks because of how good their defense is, both on the defensive line and on the outside, Akeem Tlaib and Peters are now hurt. Tlaib might be out a long period of time, and Peters may or may not be ready for Thursday night football. That opens up some backups who will still be talented players, but nowhere near as talented or locked down as Akeem Tlaib and Marcus Peters. So... Thielen and Cooks are now viable, and I think that they're captain viable as well, uh, as opposed to, you know where they were, or if I was thinking about this game on Saturday or, or Friday of last week saying, huh, they're going to play next week. Who could I have a captain? I'm way more open now to have Thielen or uh, Steph Diggs than I was before. So let's take a look. Like if we put Thielen in there, you know, at captain spot, what does that open up? So we're still going to have Gurley. Uh, probably going to go with Cousins. Probably going to go with Diggs. Uh, then we're still going to need a kicker in there. Or something low priced. And we'll look at the low price guys in a bit. So let's go with uh, this thickened guy. That leaves us only 3,500. Can't even fit Dan Bailey in that situation. Could go with the Vikings defense and hope for a pick six. Higby's been pretty good, but like, can you see a return on 2,600? I think he's priced somewhat appropriately. Made a couple of good catches, but you're going to have to hope that he falls into the end zone. Uh, Malcolm Brown has been the for sure backup running back. Uh, there was a lot of buzz that it was going to be John Kelly who had an excellent preseason, but he hasn't really uh, made any dent at all. He has been a healthy scratch uh, at least one of the weeks. I don't know that there's much down here that we can attack unless Dalvin Cook is out again. Then we can maybe take a look at Boone. Uh, that game against Buffalo where everybody thought that Latavius Murray was going to be the chalk, myself included, mostly on FD, but uh, on DraftKings, less so. We talked about that on the Anti-Tinker cast and why. Uh, so I, I guess I dodged a bullet there. By, by, my process led me to dodging uh, a bad chalk bullet uh, where people, I think, got unlucky that the Bills beat them by that much. If this game is close, Boone is going to get some snaps if Cook is out. But there doesn't look to be that many cheap options, at least not as many as there were on the Monday Night Football slate, where you had Jaquiz Rogers, you had Vance McDonald, you had uh, a bunch of guys who were going to, uh, Washington, a bunch of guys that were going to actually play kind of snaps, you know, where this week, not so much. Laquan Treadwell, getting targets at least. He's interesting at 3K. I think he definitely has more upside than the kickers. So if you want to plug Treadwell in there, right? Uh, to me, he has more upside than the kickers unless a kicker has like, you know, four field goals, one of them being 50 yards. Laquan Treadwell is going to get four targets. If one of them is a 20-yard touchdown pass, all of a sudden, uh, that changes the entire slate, right? If he stiff arms somebody into oblivion and runs a 60-yard touchdown, uh, that changes the entire slate. So going with a different captain, can we play both QBs or no? No, I don't think we can. So like if we go with Diggs, if you say that, you know, Diggs is going to be my captain based on, uh, you know, the injuries to both of the Rams quarterbacks, still going to plug in him, still going to plug in Thielen. Uh, where else can we go from here? Like without kickers, how can we do a lineup without kickers that's going to be, so like Rudolph? Like I don't know if I want three pass catchers on Minnesota. Maybe Cup. Woods has been getting solid targets. Obviously had a ridiculous game uh, last week against the Chargers. Chat says they like Everett as a punt. Let's take a look. I mean, I like Higby better than him, but he is 1K. Again, it's a guy that would have to fall into the end zone for you. I don't see... I don't like... Okay, 
yesterday on stream, we didn't do a Monday night video because uh, there just wasn't enough time for me to get one out. We talked about it on stream and there were guys down here like Switzer who actually got into the end zone last night, like McDonald, like uh, Jaquiz Rogers, guys who are going to have a significant role at 2K and below. I don't see those guys on this slate that have a significant role in the offense uh, that are actually going to play. The closest thing at 2K is Brown. Uh, and then everybody's above him. Higby, Treadwell, they're all priced up. So this is going to be a very tight Thursday night slate. I still think you can get all of the studs. You know, I still think that it's extremely possible to get all of the studs in there. You know, you can plug Cousins and you got 3,800 with two kickers. Like, I think that this is going to be a, a somewhat popular build, right? Like, I think you're going to see that a lot. Unless you think that Goff is going to go off. Then you build a Rams stack lineup, right? So even if you go with Thielen there, that leaves you 7,900. You can't get to Diggs. So you'd have to come off of Ficken, get to Diggs, uh, and then probably play Laquan Treadwell uh, in that sort of a lineup, right? So like almost a Minnesota stack with Gurley. Uh, looking at a Rams stack will be the last thing that we do for Thursday night. So if we go with him, we go with Goff, uh, Woods, Cooks. Gurley should be in the captain. Where Dan Bailey, 2,400. Would you go with Malcolm Brown? How would you fill out a Ram stack, chat? Would you fill out a Ram stack like that or would you come down off of somebody else? Where would you come down here? OG Karate Kid, of course. Uh, someone says, sorry, I'm late. No problem. PMC McKenna or PMC Kenna or P McKenna. I don't know if it's an army thing or if it's, you know, P. McKenna. You got to let me know. Thank you very much for the tier one sub. Huh. This is an interesting build. Going with like a Ram stack. Like what if we put in Ficken? Then we have 800. Like you're not going to play the Vikings defense against the Rams. That, that would be stupid. Vikings defense against the Ram stack would be dumb. Right? So Ram stack is almost... Not impossible, but like unless you come down to cup, you still have three thousand. You just don't have you don't have much that you can do there. Treadwell seems better. I think that's true. So like, all right. So theoretically speaking, I think my favorite build that we've built so far, okay, uh, for this slate, uh, is going to be one of Diggs or Thielen in the captain spot. So if we start with Thielen, we go to Cousins, we get Gurley in there. Uh, then probably we're going to have to go with both kickers based on, so we're back to the old style, right? Uh, and then 7,900 allows me Robert Woods, allows me Cooper Cup, uh, unless I come down. Like if I come to Cooper Cup, then I can, can I get Ficken up to somebody? I can go to like Rams D here, hope that Cousins makes a mistake. You know, I think that that's going to be the most kind of popular build with most likely Gurley in here. But I think you're going to see some Thielen and Diggs in the captain spot as well. Get someone to bring it back? Well, I mean, there's always somebody to bring it back. It's a two-team two slate, right? So like, if we, if we slam Gurley, Thielen, Diggs, both kickers. Kicker, kicker. Unless you want to... Darn it. I hate that it starts on that and not that. We go Gurley there, Thielen, Diggs. I want to get a quarterback. I just do. And Cousins is 1,800 cheaper uh, based on the matchup. So I think Cousins is uh, is kind of the play here. We're going to have to find a value play uh, if we go that route. And that's why I think that Gurley in captain spot is not going to be the nuts. That's why I think that Thielen is going to be the nuts up there. Because he just allows you to get all the other guys. You get Gurley. Uh, you get Diggs. You have Cousins. Uh, and then you can very simply do that. And that that seems to be the route that i am gravitating towards the most you can come off of digs if you want you can even get you know one of the rams receivers in there if you can't get to digs you want to beef up him to dan bailey at 7900 you can get dalvin cook or you can go to woods there's a lot of different ways to go this week i like the way that the pricing is appreciate you guys hanging out for this video need both qbs is definitely a route we didn't take a look at that one but let me know in the comment section if you like a 2QB look for this week's Thursday night. 
single game showdown on DraftKings. Thank you for hanging out. Click that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Ring the notifications bell. I'll throw a subscribe button up there. Make sure you check out one of my other videos right here. And we'll catch up to you later. Bye, guys.